today we will discuss about different uh, parts of the brain uh, as we know uh, earlier we have discussed that the brain and spinal cord they are the part of the central nervous system and I'll, today I will discuss about different parts of the brain and their functions in brief so brain it is consisting of fore brain mid brain or hin and hin brain which are also known as prosencephalon mesencephalon and rhombencephalon respectively fore brain is consisting of the cerebrum and diencephalon so cerebrum and diencephalon diencephalon is consisting major component of the diencephalon is thalamus hypothalamus others are epithalamus and metathalamus and after the midbrain the pons med, uh, medulla oblongata and cerebellum are there so pons and cerebellum are collectively called as metencephalon and medulla oblongata uh, is called as myelencephalon so brain stem uh, is consisting of the midbrain pons and medulla oblongata so this midbrain pons and medulla oblongata is collectively called as brain stem this is called as brain stem as because the other region of the brain actually depends upon this structure uh, as it is uh, it's like a tree it's a st it acts like a stem of a tree and, and that's why it is called as brain stem and uh, then cerebellum is there it is a part of the hind brain so mid brain pons and medulla oblongata is consisting of the brain stem and pons medulla oblongata and cerebellum they are the part of the hind brain so if you look to the look uh, at the structure of the brain externally this is this is the structure of the human brain here you can find the meninges the covering of the brain so this is inferior view this is superior view superiorly the cerebrum is divided into uh, two hemisphere right and left hemisphere so if this is called as right, left cerebellum hemisphere and this is called as right cerebral hemisphere and within this hemisphere there are some engraved portion which are called as gyrus and there are ferro deep ferro or are found there depressions are found there these are called as sulcus so this is a fissure deep fish uh, sulcuses are called as fissure longitudinal we have a longitudinal sulcus uh, sorry longitudinal fissure which divides the cerebral cortex into two half uh, one is uh, right cerebral hemisphere and another is left cerebral hemisphere so there, there is another sulcus which is known as central sulcus and it is consisting of um, central sulcus divides the cerebrum into two, two different um, lobes also that we will discuss uh, um, later on so this is the sagittal sections of our brain this is a structure which is called as colpus callosum this is the nerve fiber actually it connects the two hemisphere these nerve fibers actually connects the two hemisphere so this corpus callosum connects the activity of the two uh, it connects it joins the two hemisphere and thereby controls the activity of the two sides of our body that is the left side and right side uh, in in our daily life we normally do go for some activities which are simultaneously occur from the, by the both right and left side and these right and left side uh, control our uh, communications are done by that means suppose you are doing a work in the right hand uh, and left hand simultaneously tries to do works in same direction and uh, this coordination is done by the corpus callosum so here this is midbrain this is pons this is medulla oblongata and this is cerebellum within the brain we are having uh, four ventricles brain ventricles these ventricles are filled up with the um, fluids which is called as cerebrospinal fluid 
the cerebrospinal fluid is uh, floating through or is flowing to the first and second ventricles these are called as lateral ventricles then then we are having a third ventricle which is located nearer to the thalamus and hypothalamus and after that we are having a uh, fourth ventricle which is located near the pons medulla oblongata and the cerebellum so there is another picture so cerebrum it is uh, functionally and structurally also it is divided into four major lobes frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe this is temporal lobe this is occipital lobe this is parietal lobe and this is frontal lobe here it is central sulcus it divides the frontal lobe and parietal lobe so central sulcus divides the frontal lobe and parietal lobe whereas the temporal lobe is divided from is separated from the frontal and parietal lobe by posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and there is another sulcus which is called as parieto occipital sulcus which divides the parietal lobe into and occipital lobe so these are the major sulcuses this one parieto occipital sulcus posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and central sulcus they divide the brain into or it's better to say cerebral cortex into four different lobes so we'll discuss this later on these are also will be discussed later on so if you look to the functional aspect of the different lobes in brief you can found that the frontal lobe is responsible for generation of the different motor impulses they are having motor functions they are responsible for speech production and to some extent it is responsible for smell perception and higher intellectual functions like memory storage of information logical analysis etc and temporal lobe is responsible for mainly responsible for hearing occipital lobe is responsible for vision or visual perception parietal lobe is responsible for different sensory functions that means all the sensory inputs are uh, received are received by the parietal lobe here cerebellum this is the uh, part of the hind brain it is responsible for balance and coordination so in brief the functions of the cerebellum cerebrum can be divided into these points number 1 it is responsible for visual perception it is responsible for audition olfaction skilled voluntary movement and skilled voluntary movements means the movements which requires which voluntarily occur and but it is responsible for for some skillful activity speech and voice production and higher mental functions like intelligence learning memory and emotion so next come to the part that a part of the thalamus the thalamus the part of the diencephalon it act as a sensory relay station that means all the sensory inputs whatever coming out from the different parts of our body they reaches up to the they reach up to the thalamus and all the information from the thalamus goes up to the parietal lobe of the cerebrum so that it can be perceived this thalamus is also responsible for crude sensation crude sensation means the sensation which are coming out from different parts of the body but it cannot be pinpointed from where it is coming and it takes part uh, uh, this structure also to some extent takes part in sleep and wakefulness mechanism that means a person when is awakened that means the thalamus is sending the information up to the cerebral cortex so until or unless the information from the cerebral uh, thalamus to the cerebral cortex is reached the person will not be awakened so by this process the thalamus plays an important important role in sleep and wakefulness cycle although other structure of our body is also 
responsible uh, or uh, other structures of the brain are also associated in this process the next structure is thalamus a uh, sorry hypothalamus the hypothalamus it is located nearer to the nearer uh, or it's better to say below the thalamus it is located nearer to the third ventricle thalamus is also located nearer to the third ventricle hypothalamus is the higher center for autonomic nervous system and it is the chief center for thermoregulation thermoregulation means the temperature regulation the temperature regulation of our body is under the control of the hypothalamus it act as a master gland of endocrine system as because the uh, we know that the pituitary gland is the uh, master gland uh, and the secretion of the pituitary gland is under the control of the hypothalamus uh, as because the hypothalamus releases some factors which are responsible for stimulating the pituitary gland to release some tropic hormone it also takes part in emotional reactions like anger fear it takes part in hunger feeling thirsty and drinking water balance and different sexual functions so all these activities are done by the hypothalamus the next structure is the midbrain it acts as a center for visual and auditory reflexes like movements of the eyeball towards the object and uh, closing of the uh, eyelid uh, if something falls upon our in our eye so these are the functions of the midbrain it helps in maintenance of the posture and equilibrium by providing a connection in between the different structure that is the midbrain cerebellum and cerebrum it is the center for the movement of the eyeball what is told earlier uh, through third and fourth cranial nerve so it is responsible for eyeball movement also and it um, thus it helps in the visual perception properly next the pons next important structure is the pons it is responsible for regulation of the breathing salivary secretion and lacrimal secretion it controls the muscle movements leads to facial expression mastication and movements of the eyeball so pons and midbrain they are associated with the movement of the eyeball pons is associated with the facial expression and mastication mastication means chewing some substances and pons is also responsible for regulation of the breathing the breathing center uh, is located at the pons and it re regulates the uh, breathing rate it also regulates the salivary secretion from the salivary gland and as well as the lacrimal secretion after that the medulla oblongata is located below the pons nearer to the fourth ventricle and behind in front of the cerebellum so it 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 plays an important role by controlling different visceral functions such as it is responsible for controlling the heart rate pons was responsible for controlling the respiratory rate and here the medulla oblongata is responsible for controlling the heart rate cardiac output cardiac output means the amount of blood ejaculated from uh, each ventricle per minute that is known as cardiac output so that is also under control of the medulla oblongata it is responsible for regulation of the blood pressure respiration with the help of obviously with the help of pons secretion of the digestive juice and movements of the elementary canal elementary canal means the digestive tract so all these structures all these visceral organs they are under control of the medulla oblongata and the last one structure is the cerebellum it is responsible for regulation of the posture and equilibrium posture means the present location of our body if i am in sitting condition that is known as sitting posture if i am in bending position that is known as bending posture so uh, these type of postures are regulated by the cerebellum that means cerebellum can regulate the contraction of different voluntary muscles in such a way that your body can maintain a particular posture and that is under regulation of the cerebellum although the voluntary contraction of the muscles depends upon the stimulus which are coming out from the motor area of the brain that means it's better to say cerebrum but it is finely tuned by the cerebellum so that the 
proper posture is maintained and cerebellum is also responsible for regulation of the skilled voluntary movement which is initiated by the cerebral cortex so although the impulses are coming from the uh, cerebrum for different voluntary activity but these are finely tuned by the cerebellum so that the muscle can coordinately contract in such a manner that our body can maintain the equilibrium and skilled movements.